Hi guys, this is topic uh, 5.3 and what we're doing is we're looking at strategies for innovation. And one of the things I want you to understand is actually that innovation is, is quite rare. Like truly innovative ideas are very, very, very rare, right? Um, you know, the light bulb, even though Thomas Edison is credited for um, creating the light bulb, he was, you know, he was definitely working on um, with other people's inventions, you know, and, and work that people had done before him. It wasn't like he just invented the thing out of out of thin air. And other people were actually trying to do the exact same thing at the exact same time. So um, the light bulb is an example of an innovation, but I wouldn't say that it was a truly innovative idea. It wasn't like something like um, Einstein's theory of relativity. That was a truly innovative idea, although even he was basing that on work that others had done. Okay. Um, now, we this this is kind of just a, a fun story about uh, Archimedes and the Eureka moment that he had. Um, so please do watch these two videos. I'll give you some ideas, and that takes us to this act of insight. So an act of insight is usually called a Eureka moment, and it's a sudden image or potential solution um, that's formed in the mind, and usually after a, a, you know a period of, of thinking about a problem. So you know if you go back to this video about Archimedes. You'll see that he had a eureka moment based on uh, his uh, trying to figure out the, the mass of this, um, sorry, the density of the crown. Okay, um, let's talk about some of the strategies that we have for, uh, adap adap uh, for innovation, and one of them is adaptation. So adaptation is when a solution to the problem in one field is used to provide a new idea for another. So for instance, here, this is called the, the hover... A lawnmower. So it's a lawnmower that doesn't have wheels, it just basically hovers above the ground and it uses the same principle as a hovercraft. So a hovercraft is a boat that can go both on land and water um, and so uh, and it, it basically um, works on a cushion of air. So these two ideas, you know, this, this idea was adapted from the hovercraft idea. This is also, um, you know, the same idea, you know, uh, another f field of um, Biology. Biology provides solutions for lots of different problems. So, for instance, the kingfisher and the bullet tr uh, train. So this is a kingfisher, and you should watch this movie. And basically, the bullet train, like this, was designed to be uh, from, from the beak of the kingfisher. So scientists looked at the, or engineers looked at the beak of the kingfisher, and they used the principle that, that, that their beak is very good um, at... Uh, hydrodynamics and um, fluid dynamics and so basically um, they adapted that to the front of this train. Another um, way that uh, uh, an innovation can come about is when you have a technology transfer. So that's when uh, a technological advance uh, forms a new design and it may be applied in the development of different types of product systems and for example laser technology was, was one of those or the microwave oven. So you can see um, this video here and basically what they talk about in this video is the fact that the microwaves are used in radar so they're the the pulse of electromagnetic radiation that's sent out and it bounces back and some guy who was working on uh, the microwave radar stations af after World War II or during World War II um, noticed that um, the a chocolate bar in his pocket melted and he thought huh and he, he basically adapted, he had that, that active insight, um, and he adapted that technology, the microwave technology, to warm up food. And our microwave ovens are based on that technology. So it's technology from um, radar that got transferred into something that we have in our kitchen. Okay, we also have analogy. So basically it's an idea from one context is used to uh, st stimulate ideas for solving a problem in another. So for instance, sonar is a classic example of this. Sonar um, basically uh, is using sound. Uh, so you send sound out and you measure the um, waves coming back, the speed, the length of time it takes for the waves to come back. And this is called echolocation. And bats have been doing this for millions of years. So basically what you're doing is you're saying, oh, okay, bats use echolocation. We can use echolocation also uh, using sonar. And so boats use echolocation based on the analogy of bats using echolocation. Okay, you might have a chance discovery. 
So it's an un unexpected discovery that leads to a new idea. And so, for instance, the most classic example of this, if you ask me, is Velcro. So the story of Velcro, and you can watch this video and it talks more about it, but essentially the story of Velcro is that there was a guy who was who was uh, walking in Switzerland in a... Uh, like a meadow, and he noticed that uh, something called burrs were sticking to his socks and his pants. And burrs are basically seeds that have little hooks all over them, and they, they tend to get stuck into your socks. Um, and he thought to himself, huh, that's interesting. I wonder if we could develop that idea into something that would, um, you know, we could use to adhere things together. And so that's what Velcro is. Velcro is a bunch of little hooks like these, plastic hooks, and then you have plastic loops. And the loops catch around the hooks. And that allows you to um, have Velcro. And so Velcro came by chance of a guy walking in a field in Switzerland. Okay, we have something called technology push. So this is when a uh, scientific research leads to an advance in technology that underpins a new idea. And so actually one of the most classic examples, and please do watch this video because it's really good. Um, one of the most classic examples is um, post-it notes. So Basically, 3M was developing an, an adhesive, and the adhesive was really pretty weak. Uh, but it would stick to the to paper, but not to anything. You know, it would stick to a wall or something like that. But when you took the the the, um, the paper off the wall, the adhesive would stay on the paper, and that was just you know, it, it was an invention that you know wasn't meant to be. Basically, the the adhesive was a failure. But applying it to paper and marketing as, as something that you could, uh, you know, a temporary adhesive is, you know, amazing. And so that this video talks a lot about that. But basically, it was a technology, a, the, in, in this case, the adhesive, and then the company found a use for it. So it was a technology push. Okay. And then we have something called market pull. So market pull is when there's a demand in the marketplace, but there is no invention that, uh, that, that meets that demand. And so somebody will step up and invent something. So uh, a good example of this is actually one of my favorite products is something called Sugru. So this woman here, um, she's from the UK, and she invented a silicon um, adhesive. So it's it's really a, a, a tough silicon plastic uh, rubber, sorry, that um, you can shape and mold into whatever shape that you want. And it's fantastic. It, it, it really will you know, fix almost anything. It's super strong, sticks to everything. And, um, you know, there was a need for this in the market. She developed a product that met that need. Okay. So people needed something like a moldable sil silicon rubber that they could put onto, uh, different objects. Like you can fix your shoes with it. Uh, I've used it in, um, I've used it to like sort of soften areas around uh, like ski poles and things like that. It's, it's pretty amazing stuff. So um, that would be a market pull. All right. And that's it for today. We'll talk about stakeholders next time.